Hello there, I'm another Magento Dev and in this video we're going to look again at the PDP. In this tutorial I'm going to use require.js uh, on page, I'm going to use a PHP variable to sort of parameterize my display of the slider and I'm going to integrate a slider that doesn't already exist in Magento so I'm not going to use the owl carousel, I'm going to use slick slider so I'm going to show you how to get that into your Magento theme and in a specific area onto the uh, product page so dead easy, dead easy this, it'll take two minutes so right this is slick slider just to sort of um, cover it yeah you could go to uh, if you just google slick slider and, and you get it and you can just download the package obviously it's free and open source okay this is the site I'm currently working on I won't show you too much of it there's 10 related products attached to this product and it looks a bit of a mess like if there was only six that might not be too bad but then you've got to rely on the client only ever adding six products also you can get handy little plugins and um, like the Amnesty automated related products plugin which injects into these areas and you could end up with an absolute load of different uh, related products in there so why not make it flexible so that's what we're going to do and the best and simplest way to make this flexible and there'll be designers out there you would have received designs with this functionality in and that's a slider make it a slider and it's dead simple really in Magento because this area is all taken care of with one file so it's items PHTML which is you, you know when you when you pull it into your theme from the um, default it's in it's in module catalog obviously and then follow the folder structure that matches this so so essentially a template it's in product list items and you can see it, it, it deals with a lot of cases um, and it deals with every type of uh, so there's only sort of three but upsells related and cross sells so by doing this adding a slider you may giving upsells, cross-sells and related all slider functionality all in all in one file swoop so it's pretty it's pretty useful so there's a couple of ways you can go about doing this right so you can include first of all there's slick slider there I've already downloaded a minified version bang it banged it in there in my custom folder in, in JS folder because that's where I sort of keep all my extra vendor plugins if you like and I'm only really using slick slider on this site it's dead simple so I could include it in here um, include a, an instance of slick and then I'm not going to though so I'll just remove that so I don't forget about it and then I could write a function here and this is just sort of standard standard jQuery um, as because it's a jQuery plugin um, and then I'll just grab some boilerplate code off here so there's the multiple slider one which is going to look similar to the one that we're going to turn this into um, and I could whack that in there, initialize it, and then as long as I'm telling Magento that the slider is to be mounted on, I'll show you the tag, on one of these tags here, which is the OL tag for the list, there. So if I said like product product items or something like that, every time product items is initially instantiated onto the page on the DOM, um, Slick Slider is going to attach itself to that couple of problems one is product type items might be used elsewhere on on the site where you don't want a slider and um, also you might want you know two versions of this say for example the client selected upsells and related and they're going to appear one below the other and um, your slip slider is going to break and majority of sliders will break because it'll need another instance um, do that very well did I? It'll need another instance and you then you're gonna to have to be a bit more sort of I have to have one for related um, and you'd have to have one for upsells or whatever the tag is um, I think it's products hyphen upsells um, and you get the picture you, you, you want to make it a little bit um, more flex a bit more dynamic a bit more sort of ready for any situation that the client's gonna throw at it via the Magento CMS and I believe that this is the sort of best way to do it and the best way I believe to do it is to have your code in the file because um, it's the simplest way of being able to use a PHP variable to control the display of the slider. So I'll just paste this back in. Right, what have we got here? First of all, we've got our call to require JS. And what we're saying is give us a jQuery and give us the file path 
to my, my instance of Slick Slider, my downloaded Slick Slider which lives here. So that's the file path that I'm, that I'm referencing there. And then I'm writing a function where I get Slick as a variable and I get jQuery as, um, so that's Slick being used there and jQuery is a dollar as usual, right? Also, this is this is what I'm talking about here. So this, this variable here, and I'll just do a quick search for it on the page. And you can see it's used here to specify what kind of grid it is, whether it's related products or upsell products. It's getting the type, right? So we can then use that type down here. And we can output onto the page which one it is. So that means if we have two, well, we could have two sliders here. We could have upsells, which will be referenced here. And we could have related, which would be referenced just below it. And, and, and the JavaScript, the jQuery for Slick Slider will be, will be parameterized uh, rather than hidden away uh, in a global area like main.js. Now, full disclosure, obviously, you could pass this as a data variable. Say, for example, you could pass it for a data variable like on here or something. You could say data slider, for example. Um, pass that variable and then you could pick that up in your main JS file you know the other file that I talked about but I'm, I'm not going to do that you could do that I'm not going to do that but I thought I'd just cover that off this isn't the only way to as always with Magento this isn't the only way to skin a cat um, so what have I got here well I've got a responsive version of Slick Slider so I've, I'm using this one here and I've just changed some parameters on it. I've just said six across, scroll one at a time, and then drop down to say three at 10, 10 24. Dead good, it's dead good. Easy to use, say, um, sorry, two at 600 and then one at 480. So you set your breakpoints in there. So it's just a great slider. It is a great slider. Right, let's give it a refresh. Obviously this actually takes about 30 seconds to do, doesn't it? It's because I've rabbited on that the video actually lasts longer, obviously. There we go. Dead simple look. Straight away you've got yourself a slider. You know, it's semi-tidy. I just need to tidy up some of the CSS and, and spacing, but... So then it's working. A lot of devs are, are digging to because designers want to do things with this area, normally involving a slider. Um, so, or a carousel or whatever you want to call it. So I thought I'd just uh, thought I'd just cover it off for you. Cover it off for you today. Um, so give us a comment, a like, um, and I'll uh, see you soon.